All right, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to the Jim of All Trades channel. Glad you made it by. My name is Jim. I am a crypto trader and a forex trader here to help you understand the market from an Elliott Wave perspective. And uh, I just want to let you know, well, Alessio Rastani, you did not get it all wrong. You didn't do so bad. Uh, but I want to show you uh, today, basically, uh, a little, little different video today, guys. I want to look at Alessio Rastani's video that he just put out. Uh, I was just looking over on my YouTube and uh, on Alessio's channel. He says, my Bitcoin wave count was wrong. And he shows what his new count is and, and he explains why he why he thinks he was wrong. And I just want to say that uh, while you were wrong on your first count, your second count isn't, isn't a good correction either. And I want to show you that you weren't so bad on your first count as far as the end result was concerned and I'll, we'll look at that and then uh, I'll show you what uh, what I think is going on guys for for the macro count of the Bitcoin count where Bitcoin's going and what wave we're in on the macro don't forget none of this is financial advice just a fun way to to present for some information to you okay with that said let's uh, let's just take a peek at what Alessio said uh, that he said his original uh, count was and then uh, then let's look at what he said it was wrong with it and why and I'm going to show you basically um, where where Alessio went wrong in his count his recount of his of his of his new thing and I just want to say on the front end I really like Alessio Rastani I'm subscribed to his channel I think he's a super balanced guy I like him as a trader and uh, just the information he brings and the perspective he brings I always appreciate his videos um, I and as an Elliott Wave trader um, I I like that he's popularizing it a little bit. That uh, he's got a lot of subscribers and and uh, he brings he brings a lot of uh, you know good um, uh, good press to Elliott Wave, where Elliott Wave often gets a bad press. Um, but what I what I don't appreciate is that uh, his knowledge seems to be somewhat rudimentary to some degree. Uh, but but nevertheless, it's still he I still really appreciate it. I just wish he had a, a better understanding of the RSI relationship with the Elliott Wave, as well as uh, Fibonacci's and some of the. Uh, some of the different and more complex structures that we often look at in Elliott Wave Theory. So I'm going to attempt to bring that to you, uh, not in a disparaging way to uh, Alessio at all, but uh, actually just to uh, just to show you that he wasn't so bad and it wasn't such a bad count after all. And I think uh, your original count had a good ending, uh, but it just had a bad count in the middle there. So with that said, let's jump into what Alessio said and just watch this and hope you enjoy the video, guys. All right, guys, welcome back. Now, as you may remember, last week in my video, I showed you this wave count on this chart of Bitcoin, this long-term 10-year chart of Bitcoin going back to 2011. And I said this particular wave count of this chart is the most likely, the most probable wave count for Bitcoin, being a five-wave move for Bitcoin, taking us into a major wave five right now in a wave five of five in the Bitcoin chart, taking us over 100,000. Not a horrible now, count. It turns out that this particular wave count is now wrong. Why? Because you see, I assumed that the chart of Bitcoin only goes back to 2011. And actually it turns out that's not the case. You see, many charts of Bitcoin only go back to about 2011. But actually some of you said to me, hey Alessio, you know there's actually more data on the chart of Bitcoin. And you're absolutely right. Guys. Brave anyway, new coin chart. Thank you very much know about this. In fact, it turns out there's more data on the chart of Bitcoin going all the way back to 2010, as yep. you can see here. So I've actually pulled the data now on the chart of Bitcoin going as far back as we possibly can go on this chart, as you can see here. So going all the way now back to 2010, as you can see there. And I'm going to explain to you now, this is major consequences for Bitcoin. In fact, there's some good news. And yes, there's... Okay, so so Alessio basically uh, explains that his first count started in 2012, and uh, you know, and it was basically his wave count was off. His his actual count. I've got the Brave New Coin chart here, but his his original count started right here where my one is, and it went up one, two, three, four, five, and that was indeed that was that was not correct because we do have more information there as well. So on the Brave New Coin chart on the log scale, we do have information all the way back here to uh, 2010. So that's exactly right. Now let's uh, let's go on to see what he says as his correction, and uh, we'll go from there. Let's go back now to our chart. Again, as I mentioned, this chart I showed to you last week was incomplete. It didn't have all the data that I wanted to look at for the chart of Bitcoin. So I now must look at this chart you're seeing here, which gives us a more complete picture of Bitcoin going all the way back to 2010. And this now changes everything. Actually, I thought at the beginning that it didn't change. Doesn't much, change it everything. Actually, change quite a lot. By the way, in case you're wondering why am I using a line chart, but it does chart, change things. The reason is that this particular line chart gives me more accurate, more reliable data. So it, it takes, provides more reliable projection. It takes out Let the wicks. Let me show you what I think this chart is now telling us. By the way, I haven't plotted all the wave counts yet. I'll give you a more complete picture of the wave counts in a few moments. But here's a question I want to ask you. 
As you can see here, plotted on this chart are waves one and two here. So a potential waves one and two. This, I believe, was the first major impulse wave of a bigger five wave move. Agreed. Now, have a look at this. If this is our waves one and two, which I believe it is, by the way, and I want you to tell me where you think wave three is. Have a think for a moment, and we'll come back. All right, let's have a think. All right, guys, did you figure it out? Yeah, it's now, right up here. My guess is that most of you watching this video, it's possible that you probably thought that wave three was here, this major wave up from here to 2013. And I'm guessing most of you probably thought that this would be, that this particular move up here, 2013, was a likely wave three. No. Now, let's, let me say this. I don't blame you if you thought that. That was my first guess, too. But actually, that's incorrect. It's wrong. It, it is now, wrong. There's a lot of reasons for this. <laughs> there's a lot of reasons why that's not wave three. But let me just give you one important one. You see, that cannot be wave three here. Because if that's the case, that would mean this would be wave four in 2015. That would mean this would be wave five. That would mean that the entire wave five move completed back here in, uh, in actually in the and you'd have a problem with that. that wave wave three can't be the can't you be the guys, shortest wave. If that was the case, and that's not the case. And right. wave one and five are, five are longer. Wave here to 2017, as I'm sure you know, after a wave five, there is a severe and quite a deep ABC wave correction, what's called a bear market. Yeah. As you can see here. So after we get our five waves up, as you can see on this chart, when the wave five completes, in other words, when the wave five of five completes here, then we get a severe correction, again, three Absolutely. waves to the downside, in this case, the ABC waves you're seeing here. And that wave actually is quite deep. So going back to our chart, if this was our wave three here, let's say that was four and five, that would mean that the entire ABC wave correction, that large ABC correction, the bear market, was simply this, what you're seeing here on this chart. And guys, that simply cannot be the case. Correct. You see, that simply is not enough time. There's Correct. sufficient time. And guys, remember, that correction, that drop in the price of Bitcoin lasted only one year. A one-year correction for a seven-year bull market? No, that simply cannot be the case. That's correct. So it's not sufficient time for a major ABC correction after a wave five. By the way, there's actually a much better explanation as to why this cannot be the correct wave count. This cannot be a wave five here. I'll explain that to you, by the way, in the member video tomorrow on Sunday. Now, you might be thinking, okay, well, that's... I'll explain it to you now. Wave three can't be the shortest, guys. Um, and wave three, wave one is bigger than wave three there. Wave five is bigger. I don't know, one and three might be the same, but anyway, wave three can't be the shortest. Looks kind of like the shortest wave there. So uh, that's uh, that's another reason. But uh, wave three is generally the largest. Generally, uh, it doesn't have to be, but it generally is. Uh, so anyway, we'll keep on. That's not a wave five. Then perhaps the correct wave count is here. Maybe this is a wave three over here. That's exactly no, the I'm answer. Sure you know, wave three is composed of five smaller waves. As Correct. You see here on our chart. But if you look at this chart, if this is our wave three, which by the way, it's not, okay, it's not the case. But if this was wave three, then how many major sub waves do we have here? All we have, we are have five. three waves up, as you can see here. And that cannot be the case. Wave three is composed of five sub waves, not three sub waves. Okay, that's where Alessio goes wrong. Okay, so uh, let's break this down. Let me show you what I'm seeing here, guys. And th this is where Eli uh, Alessio doesn't understand uh, what we call extended fifth waves and potential, um, and as uh, also RSI uh, analysis along with uh, these waves. So let me let me show you what I'm seeing here, and um, we'll go from there. Let me address a trade right here. <laughs> We'll call that okay. All right, very good. So uh, yeah, let's let's jump into the chart and let's show him where, where he's gone wrong. What 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 he missed here. Go ahead and bring this over here. There we go. Zoom in just a little bit here. Let me get a little line chart. Just maybe it'll make it simpler as well. There we go. Beautiful. Let me take my waves off the chart. I'm gonna clear my drawings. How's that? There we go. I'm on the weekly. Let's go to the monthly. No, weekly was better. All right, here. Let's look at it. So let's count the subwaves of this particular wave right here. So uh, let me get my RSI off the off the screen as well. Sorry about that, guys. Here we go. Let's try it again. So yeah, I, a one two. I'm really great with that. That looks real good. Uh, we he and I agree with that one two. Now 
Alessio, you weren't wrong. You just missed something here. Let's look at this wave right here. It's kind of tricky. It's kind of tricky. All right. But uh, what you got to notice here, guys, is that you've got a one, two here. Then you got this little thing right there. One, two, okay, three, four, five. Okay. Um, what this is called is this is this would be one, two. Okay, then you got a one, two, three, four, five right there. That's the third wave of this subwave here. Okay. So we count it like this. One two this would be this five waves right here would be three that's four and this big thing is five and that's what we call an extended fifth wave guys let me take a minute and do a little teaching on extended fifth waves what extended fifths do is um they, they extend the fifth wave the fifth wave becomes extended and, and if, as you look at it the one the one two often looks very small uh in comparison okay and then the three and when you look at it a lot of times, uh, basically, it will look as if it's a three-wave move, okay? Uh, when you pull the fibs on it, it'll even measure to the one-to-one -one extension a lot of times, okay? Uh, and it'll look like a three-wave move, but nonetheless, uh, it becomes an extended fifth wave. And you'll notice that this fifth wave has the hallmarks of extensions in it. Uh, that the way you see all these little dinky subwaves in here, those are the hallmarks of, of an extended wave here. You got a one, two three, four, and then you got another extended fifth right in there. So you've got a really extended wave. That that bull run of 2017, that was an extended fifth wave. And that was the end of the third wave. And so you've really got a one. Alessio, you got it. You had it right. You just, your logic is wrong right in here. But that's okay, man, because... It's really not about getting it right or getting it wrong. It's just about being a community and sharing our thoughts together and, and doing the best we can, right? But this is the way I would interpret this wave. We got a one, two, we got a three, a four, and a five. And that indeed is the third wave. So let me put my count back on the chart and we're going to put it back on red. And the main count is going to be one, one, two. All this is three right here. That's four, and we're getting the fifth wave. Now, in the the other thing that uh, he need another structure that he may not be aware of or may know. He may or may not know. I don't know, um, but not here to down him in any way. Uh, is that we have possibly an ending diagonal working here in the fifth wave, and so the fifth wave is is possibly working here an ending diagonal right there. Let me change my color here. Of uh, we'll make this white, and uh, we'll make this. Um, minuscule there we go and there's an ending diagonal for a fifth wave and that does put us uh put us up here possibly here at 100k or so uh shoot uh, even 114k something like that as a as a potential end of that wave so this would be my ultimate count here and my sub wave count of the wave three would be one two we got one two three four five three four and then extended fifth wave there in the third so this this is basically uh, a five wave count of the third wave that puts us here uh, and one more one more thing we want to show here as far as an ultimate count five wave move of Bitcoin is the RSI analysis and so let's go to the RSI analysis and I'll show you something here I had to go to the um, I have to go to the regular chart to show you uh, what what we notice here, guys, in the in this particular chart. Now my lines are all off. Don't pay attention to my lines, but just look at the RSI. The RSI, when it makes its highest peak, when it makes its highest peak, generally speaking, is around the third wave. Okay, the third wave. What happens is you'll get a high peak here uh, of a third wave. You'll get a correction that comes back down and creates bullish divergence, uh, hidden bull is what we call it. Um, you go down to the three-day chart, you'll see it a lot better there. Uh, but the highest peak happened here at the third wave. We got this to come down and create a hidden bullish divergence, okay? And then uh, and then after that, what happens is the fifth wave will come up, and in the RSI, it will make a lower low. And that's what creates the divergence we often see as a reversal divergence, as, as we often see on the charts, that we get a divergence between the third and the fifth wave, okay? And what, what happens then is uh, basically... Uh, this divergence is calling calling the end of a wave, okay? And that's what that's what the reversal or the regular divergence does. Uh, the price makes a higher high while the RSI does not make a higher high, and then we continue on uh, down for a larger correction, okay? And so basically, that that would be the count here. That uh, this is the highest peak on the RSI. The fifth wave is going to come up and create the uh, the fifth wave here. Um, and then we're going to continue on down. So that's likely a count, guys. So that's at least a plausible count uh, that says, hey, uh, Alessio, you weren't all wrong uh, in your um, 
in, in what you were seeing in the first, I, I do agree with your correction going to the BLX chart uh, or the uh, or the um, the uh, the time frame, uh, including 2010, which the BLX chart does. Uh, so with that said, guys, my my main count here uh, as uh, is indeed we're, we're in the fifth wave and we're in we've got an ending diagonal here. So we'll again just uh, look at it like this. One, two, three four and five with a uh, upper target here potential uh, uh, of my bullish count uh, potential of about about 120k guys that's what we're looking for so I hope that I uh, hope that video was uh, helpful to you guys and uh, thanks Alessio for popularizing uh, Elliott wave and at least bring it to the masses uh, but uh, you know hopefully there there are some technical aspects of Elliott that need to be understood there's a whole aspect of Fibonacci relationships between the waves that, that really have to be t uh, taken into consideration as well and so with all, all that said there's a lot more to learn than fives and threes but definitely fives and threes are the are the baseline of Elliot so uh, glad uh, glad he brought that video today guys if you enjoyed this video thanks again for uh, watching and share the love in the comments share what you think what's your main count is um, of uh, where we are in the chart I'm looking at an ending diagonal here as a, as a potential count here uh, guys and uh, that it's looking pretty good to me and 120 looks uh, very plausible um, so let's see where, where the market takes us. With that said, you guys have a fantastic day. Thanks for stopping by. Bye-bye.